Well, good evening, friends. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe B Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally, and I mean literally, does not work. You know, we are only five days, well, excuse me, six days, one hour, 46 minutes, and 48 seconds away from kickoff against Tampa Bay. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to get the bad taste of the 2020 season out of my mouth. It was just awful. You know, this time last year, it was crazy because, you know, we had Mike Nolan. You know, we didn't really have that many changes on defense other than, you know, getting Don Terry Poe. And we had had Clinton Haha Dix, who came in for a cup of coffee and got cut in training camp, who wasn't with the 49ers, but got cut again. We had Gerald McCoy. Uh, of course, who got hurt. We had Emerson Griffin, who, you know, we traded and got rid of, who was cut again. So we had guys that really aren't having staying power right now in the NFL that were our top dogs. Well, the Cowboys have gone in the other direction for the most part. They have actually gone through and said, we're going to use the draft and we're going to get young pups. Well, I tell you, if this defense and this team is going to turn it around, it's going to be on the backs of guys like Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons, man, he you know he he's saying the right things, he's doing the right things. He looks like the right guy to be a leader on that defense. I tell you what he reminds me of, and it's still early to even making these comparisons. I know when you start saying things like this, people are going to say, "How could you go ahead and do something like that?" But see, I look at the New Orleans Saints defense, which had been down for a number of years. They ended up getting a guy that I wanted to bring to Dallas, you know, some three years ago, DeMario Davis, who was leaving the Jets. DeMario Davis has become the heart and the soul of that defense. That linebacker, and that's where I say, you know, Jalen Smith could learn a lot from DeMario Davis. He leads by, one, firing guys up, but two, by example. And three, always taking uh, you know, basically responsibility for everything that goes on in the field. You'll never hear DeMario Davis say, well, look at the film. You'll never hear him say something like that, you know, that I'm fine. That's a guy who every single day, and I know what he does in the off season, as far as his workouts, everything else, even though he's got his contract, getting paid and everything else, he's not satisfied with just what he did last year. He's constantly trying to evolve and get better and take care of himself from every standpoint. And that's why he's a leader on that team. Other guys follow behind him. And I see that in Micah Parsons, at least from what we get from the interviews and what we've seen on the field and, you know, the clips from training camp and stuff like that. That's a guy who is all-encompassing, who is and will be a leader question will be is just you know how well will he be on the field that's the only part that that it's going to be answered starting on sunday so excuse me on thursday so this was an interview that they had um where literally he says you know we can't give away secrets to tom brady and talks about everything that is micah parsons and the dallas cowboys let's have a little listen here to this interview emotions on that and and you knew you would have a big role, but with you being in so many different packages, has that even exceeded maybe what you thought you might be able to do immediately? No, nah, I knew coming in I, I had a lot of potential to do a lot of good things, and I knew my versatility would be a good reason why they brought me in here. But, you know, uh, right now my mindset, everything's just going up one. Uh, I got to be locked in just a little bit more. I got to just play a little bit better um, out here at practice. I got to do everything right so that way I'm, you know, I'm going in to week one feeling my best, and I'm not thinking I'm going to just play fast so so everything's just going up one Mike you were one or two years old when Tom Brady was a rookie in this league you're without playing against him in your first game how do you fathom something like that that you're getting ready for your game number one uh, that's actually pretty crazy, but, you know, you just got to give credit to him, the fact that he's able to just stay in this league this long and be so dominant, you know. So he's one of the greatest to ever do it. So I really look up to a guy like Tom Brady because so, I want to have a long career as he do. So um, it's pretty awesome, I would say. You were younger than your your son is today when <laughs> Tom was in the league. Is that just crazy to think about? That's a crazy <laughs> fact, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Mike, I believe Correct, he was telling us that you have been having one-on-one meetings with Dan in part because of the versatility of your roles. What are those meetings like, and how would you describe everything you're going to be asked to do? 
Um, you know, can't give out too many secrets. I want them to be a little bit surprised, you know what I mean? Because when we come out there swinging, it's going to be a war. But, uh, you know, Coach Quinn bring me in, and we just go through some calls. What would I do right here? How are we going to line up and things like that? So that way I'm just getting a head start on. So that way I'm just thinking a little bit better and playing a little faster, and I can get everybody lined up and know what I'm doing out there. So we're just working on muscle memory and wordplay. That's all. How did this feel, though, that they're putting so much on you? They're giving you so much responsibility. Uh, I don't feel no pressure. I mean, you kind of want this. Like, you know, that means that just puts in a belief in me and my abilities. And, you know, I want to do everything in my ability to prove them like right. The reason is you should trust me and you should put me in this position to make plays for you guys. So this is what I want. Those meetings with Dan continue when he wasn't around? Were you guys doing them virtually? Uh, nah, they could continue, but you know, as soon as he got back today, we hit it right away. So you know, it's pretty awesome. How you been able to manage all the, the stuff that given in terms of learning it, watching the film, and these three different positions? How are you been able to manage your time and that kind of stuff? Um, really just, I mean, it's pretty easy now that you're not in school. You can always put football first. I got 24 hours in a day. I think I can make enough time to focus on what I'm getting paid to do. You know there you I mean? go. Talk about the excitement of getting in your first game. We saw at times during hard knocks you were hoping to play more series or snaps to finally get to just cut loose for a whole game. How excited are you to do that after all the time off? Yeah, I'm super excited. You know, it's going to be my first full game in about two years, so it gives me a great chance to go out there, I maybe make a mistake, but you know, just keep going, put the next go, next play, next play, and not let anything get the best of me, and just you know, just play my best really. So uh, it'll be exciting to finally get my first full game under my belt again. You'd like, there's, you'd like to there's an element of surprise to everything that you're going to be doing? Yeah, because, uh, you know, we just, because the things that we're able to do with so much time that we have on this defense, uh, it's going to be pretty remarkable, I would say. What is, I mean, you say it's going to be remarkable. What is the ceiling for the defense, or where are you most excited about how y'all can play off each other? Uh, I'm really excited because everyone's different. Like, everyone adds, and we all connect pretty well to make it complete. Um, you know, the, between the linebacker room, the versatility we have in there, and the D-line room with Randy and D-Law and Bash and D-A, with so much speed out there this year, I think it's going to be pretty nice what we can do in that box. I think you told us at the beginning of training camp that you wanted to find one-on-one -on -one ways to connect with your teammates, figure out what they're made of, have them the same with you, whether it's connect tour or lunch. What are some of the ways you've done that over the last few weeks, and how would you set, How far would, have you come in building those relationships? Um, Pretty far, you know, I had to ease laying up, you know what I mean? We just went to the gun range. I got into this country things, and, you know, I'm planning on going out to Idaho with them pretty next year. So uh, just learning, you know, what you find an interest in um, what your teammates like to do and then, you know, being open to those ideas. So uh, I think it's pretty cool. And, then, you know, we had a pretty awesome time bringing some food and we shot some pretty cool guns and things like that, things I've never done before. So uh, it's pretty awesome that, you know, with different other players, we just find different things. I might talk to Jalen about clothing, you know, he, he likes to dress nice and, you know, bro, we might just talk about like rookie stuff what we go through. So uh, you just got to find a common ground be open-minded and really just find something that everyone likes to do and enjoy it. Have you always done that with your teammates? Yeah, pretty much. You know, I kind of, because I want to, like, make sure, you know, I got you and, like, you know, we brothers. Like, I have, I want to see all my teammates be great in a way, so I just want them to know whenever they're around me or when I could be around them, there's nothing but love. There's been a lot of turnover on this team. Like, we talked about 43% of the roster is new uh, from last year, and obviously you weren't here last year, but from where you're at, What's your impression of that infusion of new players, what that's done for this team? Oh, man. I don't know what it was like last year, but, you know, uh, coming into this year, and I'm saying, I'm like, man, we could be a really goddamn good football team. And, you know, the way that everyone's connecting well, um, you know, everybody wants to see the next person do well. There's no, you know, hoping on nobody's downfall. We're all hoping that we all do well. We kind of all want to, we, we not kind of, we damn sure want to win games. And we know that we need every single one of us to stay healthy to win those games. What's the key, what's the key, to, what's the key to stopping Tom Brady and then about uh, to be honest with you, I mean, not too many people stopped them, you know what I mean? I would say just slow them down. They got pretty good offense. They got a lot of weapons, and, you know, we just going to have to go weapon on weapon and see who outlasts the other weapon, you know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? Slow them down and put some pressure on them, and, you know, hopefully we come up with a turnover off a mistake. Work hard, play harder. This Labor Day weekend, get in the groove. You got a little extra ad there. Um, I like that 
interview because he didn't go through, we're going to go in there, we're going to clean up, you know, Tom Brady, he's an old man or anything like that. He actually went in there, you know, humble, humble. You know, we're going to go ahead and try and slow him down. Nobody's slowing him down. You know, don't don't tug on Superman's cape, so to speak. But I loved what he said about the speed that this team has, that they are going to be nasty in the box. I love, oh my God, Na- what? Nasty in the box? We've been pathetic in the box. Now, I, we've been pathetic in the box now. But if we can get nasty in the box, oh my goodness, that is Words to my ears. Um, he pointed out that this is pretty interesting that, you know, when we say the same old Dallas Cowboys, well, almost half that roster, 43%, is all new players on there. So you cannot take these guys and put the faults of 26 years on all their backs. They weren't here for all that. This is a new team with a new philosophy, a new sense of urgency, and a new camaraderie. So, you know, I like the fact that he said, we're going to be a goddamn good football team. That I love. We're going to go into this more tonight, later on in our live stream in about two and a half hours. I hope you guys join us. We're going to have fun this season. We're going to turn the page on what was just the worst season that I can ever remember in the 55 years that I have been watching football. (sighs) That was the worst. We got nowhere to go but up. But you know what they say about me? What an idiot! What an idiot! Yeah, that's what most people say about me. What an idiot. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get up on out of here. And I appreciate you being here. See you guys tonight. For us today, and we will leave you with a, I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. And thing sucks. And five, four, three. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks again for watching. We'll leave you with Sting 